What's up, everybody? You're watching Inverse Kramer, where we do the opposite of everything Jim Kramer says. My mission is simple. His mission is very complex, and we're going to break it down. To make you money. He's going to try to make money from you, or at least for his coat. We're going to get into that. I'm here to level the playing field. He's here to amplify existing inequalities. For all investors. For just the ones who really pay attention. There's always a bull market somewhere. Some opportunities are rare. There's not always a bull market somewhere. And I promise to help you find it. He's promising to mislead you. Man money starts now. Man money has already started. Hey! What, what chord is that? That's an A. So the inverse of that, I don't know, how about an E f how about an E flat minor? That's what I'll play next episode. I'm Kramer! And I'm a psychic economist. Welcome to Man Money! Welcome to Inverse Kramer. Welcome to Kramerica. What the hell is Kramerica? I'll be one of my friends who's trying to make some money. He's gonna try to mislead you and get you to you know, waste some you're gonna make a little bit of money, just enough to trust him. My job is not just to entertain, but to educate and teach you. He's an entertainer. Just to call me at 1-800-743-CBC or tweet me at... Don't call him. Don't tweet him. Jim Kramer. All right, so I've been coming out here. He's been laying low. What, every night for 15 years? Almost every night for, yeah, 15 years. The guy's, uh, the guy's pretty good. I've been watching him a long time. I've never once worn a sweater. He's worn a sweater before. You just haven't seen it on the show. Cashmere or otherwise. But after still one more record shattering day, Dow advancing 83 points, S&P gaining 1.02%, NASDAQ pulling 1.73%, it's time for wardrobe change. Okay, we're making it seem like everything's growing, but we're still in recovery mode. Some sectors have uh, outpaced where they used to be, but a lot of places haven't caught up yet. The economy, we're looking at a split-screen economy here. Why well, put on a sweater when it's 80 degrees outside? It's not 80 degrees outside. Because my late mother, Louise Kramer, gave me some great advice many, many years ago. See, Mom loved the stock market. But more than that, she loved gambling. She loved the ponies. Particularly the make Okay, we're going to get into this thing where there's gambling and stock market. Maybe it has some similarities, maybe not. Aiden claiming races and Liberty Raceway. Love the Daily Double. Most of all, she loved the slots. Now, I'm more of a blackjack guy. Okay, he likes having some, uh, you know, a point where you can... There's a little more involved when you play blackjack. If you're saying somebody else is into slots, it's all about the randomness. But Mom, she couldn't go buy a one-armed bandit at Bally's without throwing away some money. Funny thing, though. She... I think he's trying to appeal to the gambler in you. There's us, Atlantic City. Funny thing, though. She always had good luck at this total game of chance. I'm not talking about a row of cherries here. I'm talking about peaches, plums, even three bars. He's exaggerating about his mother's winnings with gambling. I mean, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, but, you know. One time, not long before she passed, 35 years ago, we went fishing off her favorite pier in Margate, right next to the old motel motel, and then headed uptown to resorts. Now okay, uh, privileged people go to Margate, okay? Like... You, you either go uh, Atlantic City or Wildwood, maybe. I mean, Wildwood is still all of his expensive down the shore. But Margate, come on. That was the one she wanted to play that night. She was an unstoppable force that day. She pulled and pulled, and I swear, the worst she caught was three lemons. There was a pile of coins so high, I was worried we'd get robbed. Didn't matter, though. She was hot, hot, hot. Did he just call his mom hot? And then she turned to me. Turned to me, and she said... We're done. Okay, he's trying to get the gambler and you to stop gambling. I'm done? I was incredulous. I had never seen anyone with that much mojo. He's taken the uh, inner child's point of view to try to emphasize with what you're feeling about the idea of not gambling after you've been winning so well. That was before the mojo word was invented. It's time to press the bet, Mom. You can't leave now. I beg you. You are on a run. 
Right, he's trying to sound like your inner child. Oh, she shut me down. Jimmy, she tells me, we're out of here. Is that why the sweater? He's been wearing this sweater just as a Jedi mind trick to try to get you to... We're going to take some of these winnings and go buy a beautiful cashmere sweater that I've had my eye on forever. He's saying take the gains and go buy something. Okay, you're not doing that, all right? I told her it may never be this good again, Mom! She said, uh, let others make some money. And then she shashayed over to the cashier window, swapped the coins for Benjamin and a couple other presents. Let others make some money. It's a zero-sum game, okay? We're playing musical chairs, and someone is always going to make more money than you anyway. So, I mean, that's on you if you're... Then we went to the store and bought that darn cashmere sweater. And the lesson has stuck with me for nearly 40 years. Sometimes you got to quit a little while you're ahead. Now, right now, we got the smoking hottest stock market I have ever seen. And it rewards companies for success so generously that it's never, never like any other market I've ever seen. Not like 1998, not like 1999, not like the insane dot-com explosion up to the second week of March in 2000 and not even like the month. Okay, he's hyping this up to be a unique buying opportunity, which it is. But, you know, this is just like a pandemic and we're in recovery mode. It's not truly like a bull market, but there is a bubble within it. So, you know, there's a lot of different things going on at the same time, and the analysts usually get pieces of the problem. Months leading up to the crash of 87. This bull market is one of a kind. Soon. It's a recovery. We generous. Combined with a tech bubble. Let's review. Last night, Salesforce reported one of the most spectacular beats of the year. Okay, I didn't expect the quarter this big until maybe late next year. Especially since the previous quarter was a tad disappointing. Heck, a major firm predicted a sizable miss just last week and slapped the stock with... This is when he gets into sports commentary mode, and he's not really so much telling you what to do. He's just telling you something that just happened. He needs to be reputable. But they sell! Yeah, go shoot sell, that sell, piece! Sell, 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 sell. I love Instead, the sound got effects. Instead, blowouts. When I interviewed CEO Mark Benioff last night, I figured the stock could probably be 10, maybe 15 points. That's a lot. Big cap stock. Just out of the Dow. But given how much it had already run, I doubt it could go much higher. Don't get me wrong. We own Salesforce for the Travel Trust. Has been, we've been thrilled. We've been thrilled for 15 points. <laughs> he has to disclose whenever he's doing something that his firm owns. And, you know, whether he talks about it, he should talk about it. Because whether he says good or bad things, it might increase the volume, you know, of this thing being out there. 15 points. No, no. It rallied $56.27, that, That's not three bars, that's the whole shooting match. The kind of move that takes your breath away. All anybody do was talk about it. $50 billion for the good guys. Yeah, beast. $50 billion for the good guys? I call it extraordinary. But it's actually not extraordinary. It's this thing, but it's actually not this thing. This type of action is becoming par for the course. Take Tesla, okay? I started pushing Tesla after they converted my non-car person door, my car person wife, and myself. I've been worried about the balance sheet. He started talking about Tesla at exactly 420. Some very smart people assured me that Elon Musk could raise $2 billion. Like, Some very smart people have been saying to buy it. Like that. And I didn't exactly like Musk. I mean, the guy who said there was a 50% chance that I'm merely a simulation. But there's a 50% chance that Jim Cramer is not a simulation. After I questioned him over some cockamamie idea to power the whole country from one giant solar field in northern Colorado. Elon Musk has a lot of ideas. But the positives became impossible to ignore. So I came out here when Tesla was under $300, and I said, pull the trigger. I was in... <laughs> but, uh, he has to be right. You know, he has to give you a lot of good information and actually do try to help when he can because he needs to get your trust. But part of it is his uh, the network and whoever he's working with, they know that they can't change the markets, but maybe if markets are going away, maybe he can swing them a certain way. And I think there's an agenda behind this where we're going to get to soon. Immediately rise. There's some Johnny come lately. <laughs> I think it's better late than never. Now, though, with the stock at uh, 2,153, it's up 600% from where I got behind it. I say, I say, Ma, get me some cashmere. 
These memes are all over the place. Today, Facebook says Apple could crush its business if some new privacy settings are integrated into the next iPhone. It was boring, but I read it. Holy cow. You got to figure Facebook's down what? What did he just try to sneak in there? He just tried to say that Facebook could just be destroyed if the Apple iPhone had stronger privacy settings. That's really big news. And sometimes Kramer sneaks in these little tiny things of truth and squeezes them into half a second. And I'm an experienced audio engineer, so I can hear those things in between his... Wow, that's crazy, man. I can't believe that. But we should do the opposite of that. We should assume that Facebook is just going to... 10, maybe 15 bucks on this news. The old Facebook may be down 20 20 dollars. Wrong. Facebook rallied 23 bucks. Yeah. It, it, it did because, see, it's now bulletproof, Facebook. See, ever since it started embracing small business, the backbone of our country, it's setting up shops in this That was a brilliant move. Helping smaller business people, both in terms of making money. But okay, now he's trying to direct you to Facebook. He's trying to say that they're a champion for small business and that they're bulletproof. I don't know whether to believe that, but he's trying to get you to think that that's what... I wonder if I should buy Facebook tomorrow. This is inverse Kramer, so you're either going to short Facebook or sell it tomorrow, first thing. But also in terms of public relations. Facebook's no longer Darth Vader with a privacy-destroying Death Star. Now it's a champion of small business. We need a new Star Wars analogy. Uh, uh, uh. It's spin, right? By the way, I do not give... Like, I, I'm not a licensed financial advisor, and I do not give financial advice. I'm simply giving you the inverse of Kramer. That's my, that's, it's not an investment product. It's the inverse of an investment product. Let me get back to it. All right, how about the $2 trillion behemoth itself? Yeah, let's talk about Apple. I always say own it, don't trade it, which is what we've done for the Travel Trust. Now, Apple's about to do a four-for-one split, and I can hear my mom whispering in my ear, Jimmy, sell one of those new shares they're giving you. Oh, she loves splits. They always just split stocks in the 80s. They'd be splitting the Coca-Cola and stuff. She always took some, something off the split-adjusted table. He's getting back to it, the his. He already established that his mother was a very wise person when it came to gambling, and uh, yeah, after a stock split, there might be a lot of people selling just a piece of it. So you might want to be prepared for that. Maybe you want to do that too. I think that's what he's trying to say. So I guess we should not do that. All right, uh, you should either sell before then or be prepared to buy as everybody else is sharing a piece of their split. That's probably the way we're going to play it. Well, then finally, there's Amazon, a company that's practically tailor-made for this moment. If you told me Jeff Bezos was a time traveler who went back to the 90s, built a company specifically to help us cope with COVID-19, oh, I tell you, you got to see. Whoa, how's that for cultural programming, okay, through media manipulation? He just basically told us that Amazon was the superhero that got us through COVID-19. You know, like, all praise Amazon. If it weren't for Amazon, we would not have survived that pandemic. So that's got to be not true if Jim Cramer's saying it. Uh, well, we have to, in inverse Cramer, we're a hedge, okay? So we have to give you the opposite of what Cramer says. So if that's the way he feels about Amazon, then we're just going to have to take the stance that Amazon is trash. Dear Shrink, but I also get where you are coming from. We have a double on Amazon for the Travel Trust, which you can follow on by joining the ActionLordsPlus.com club. And I'll tell you, I think I need a psychiatrist to hold on to it. Are we taking anything off the table? I mean, Amazon's the best in show. It's the favorite. It's the machine that always pays off. Eh, but we sold a little. Well, how did I feel if you sold a little? How about we can eat it? You always feel like an idiot when you sell anything in this market, right? So why ever ring the register? Why not banish the register? Am I right? <laughs> this is heavy emotional manipulation. It's it's really tough to not get sucked in and buy into it. So, what did he just say there? Um, he's trying to make you feel bad for selling before a stock continues to rise. You know, because you got to secure the gains. you got to pull some out when you can, all right, whenever you're up. Secure the gains. But sometimes you do that and the stock will continue to rise and you will feel like an idiot, okay? But don't feel like an idiot, just realize that you took some off the table. There's nothing wrong with that, okay? So. Why ever leave the stock casino with some cash in hand? What a waste. That's really intense, man. That's... Well, it's simple. While stock picking is mostly a game of skill, 
there's still a very large element of chance involved. Okay, not as much as the slots. No, just as much as the slots. It's like there's so many factors. Not a single person can predict the market. And most of the people that try to are wrong, historically. And tomorrow, maybe Fed Chief Jay Powell means the Toll Brothers headline that I saw today, where the head home builders raising prices aggressively and decides the economy's too hot and crushes us in that big speech of his. Maybe our government's borrowed too much money and interest rates start to rise at last as it funds the most debt in history. Maybe the economy rolls over if Congress can't pass another stimulus package next month. Maybe the tensions with China escalate to something more serious than a trade war. He's just listing all the things that people are worried about right now. He's trying to get you into it. He's trying to heighten the fear. Who knows what he's going to bring us next. All right, so inverse Kramer, all right? Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. You're in control of your own reality. And you can get hit with psychic manipulation, but you don't have to get sucked in. We don't know the future. Forget about the stocks, the price derby. But we do know the future. Forget, we, we don't know the future. There's always a chance something bad could happen. Okay, we know that. There's risk. There's always risk. And those terrific stocks could tank. So I'm telling you, take something off the table. Why is he telling us to tell, take something off the table, though? Because that's something that you should be doing anyway. He's trying to come across like he's giving some good old-school wisdom to the new young kids to try to gain their trust. But I'm skeptical. Now, it, it doesn't even matter what the next piece of news is. Do you know that I actually think we're getting a lot of good news? I wouldn't be surprised if we get some positive developments on the COVID front sometime soon. Better, quicker diagnostics. Therapeutic. He was trying to get you to feel okay about selling a little bit right now. Either way, though, there's a large segment of the economy that's on fire right now. Uh, even as the vast swaths of the economy are still in very bad shape. And that's good. Doesn't matter. I'm wearing this blue cashmere sweater, which I actually may keep. Uh, and then, by the way, this is the color of Salesforce.com, of their cloud. I'm wearing it because my mom gave me that great advice. Take, take some. Just, just some of those winnings. Why is he telling you to sell a little bit of your winnings right now? Does that mean it's going to go higher? Does that mean that all of it's going to tank very soon, but he wants you to sell just a piece of it instead of selling completely out? But maybe it's definitely on its way. We're at the beginning of like a five to seven year bull run. Possibly. And selling a little bit right now it won't hurt you too much, but it could mess up your rhythm. Go buy yourself a sweater. That's what it's about. Consumerism. You will never give that part of your profit back. No, that's the worst thing you can do. Buying things that you don't need. That's... That's it. That's why he's been trying to mess with you. The powers that be need us to stimulate the economy. The money, the, the money needs to flow again, okay? We took a lot of this money and wrapped it up in assets. Some people pay back debt with the money. Lots of people are just struggling to pay their rent and you know pay all their bills and everything. There's not a lot of frivolous spending going on for fun. There's still a few sectors that haven't quite made recovery. He's trying to get us to stimulate the economy. He wants you to pull some of your money out of the market and go buy something for no reason. Well, this ain't Christmas yet. Here's the bottom line. Yeah, it is time to ring the register on part of your position so that you're playing with the, maybe the house's buddy. That's the ultimate. That's the holy grail. Maybe take out what you put in, let the rest run. My mom didn't know much about the fit. He's definitely up to something. He's trying to get you to get out. And our interest rates are pinned to Just a tiny bit, though. Just Demics or black swans or fat tails or any of that authentic Wall Street... They need the money. Gibberish. But she had common sense. And common sense says even if you think you have the hottest hand in the world, when you're up big, you got to take some profits while you still have them. He's right about that. However... I think him trying to get you to go buy something you don't need when you could either let it ride or sell completely out. I think both of these two alternatives need to be examined immediately, okay? This came out after market closed today. So the effect that this guy has on whoever watches his show 
hasn't really come in until tomorrow. Which, uh, by the time you're watching this, is today. So you got to act soon, all right? Examine these two possibilities. Instead of selling, securing some of the gains and proceeding like as usual, instead of taking some of that out and go buying a sweater for no reason, consider these alternatives. Either getting out of the market completely or keep on putting some new money in and keep letting it ride. It's going to be one or the other. He's trying to... He's trying to get you to spend that money. Look at it this way. It's the responsible thing to do. It's the responsible thing. He's, it's, he's using emotionally manipulative words to control your investment decisions. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. And now on the music. Okay. It's... You can watch this show, but you have to be impervious to psychic manipulation. You've got to have your shield of white light and, you know, have some spiritual training in this stuff. Man, you can't be hypnotized by this crap. Follow at Jim Kramer. Don't follow him. On Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag mad tweet. You should troll Kramer. Send Jim an email. Don't send him an email. To madmoney at cnbc.com or... CNBC, they're the people that are up to this. You know, it, he wouldn't be allowed to say any of this stuff if it didn't serve their agenda, whatever that is. Or give us a call. Don't call them. Or, or you should troll them. At 1-800-7... I'm not going to... Oh, it's not an A. This, let's see. 4-3 CNBC. All right, I'll, I'll have this plugged in, and maybe next episode I'll do that. So thank you for watching Inverse Kramer, where instead of getting you hyped up and scared, we're just going to give it to you straight. And I'm going to try to filter through and give you the Inverse Kramer and do with it what you will. I'm not telling you to do or not do anything. I'm just going to tell you what the Inverse Kramer is and any decisions that you make based on that presentation your responsibility. I'm going to have to say that this is presentation is for entertainment purposes only. Inverse Kramer is brought to you by a subsidiary of um, trash people smoking donuts. Check out the Patreon. I'm going to try to do another one of these soon. What's today's date? Do I even know what today is? I think we're coming on the 27th. Okay, so this is Jim Kramer's show at Market Close on August 26, 2020 crazy year. Hurricane Laura is coming. Okay, goodbye.